So it's been almost a year since my last Akuma worst to best, and there has been a ton of changes to Akumas, literally to the point where the entire tier list is inaccurate now. So if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like, button, subscribe, let's get right to the video, guys. All right, so before I start this, I am going to be including all of the dope guys. Now, that is because in Shindle Life lore, all dope guys were once Akumas. They're just uh, reincarnated Akumas. That's the whole Adokai lore. But starting off, I'm actually going to be doing a PvE only tier, which is going to include Xeno Dokai. Guy. you guys know why this is in this tier it's just a pve only bloodline i would recommend never using this for pv pvp just because it's mainly meant for boss farming that's about it when it comes to the xeno dokai there's not much else to say about it in all honesty it is just for boss grinding and the coming in 11th place is actually going to be the normal dokai now normal dokai is going to be in the 11th place simply because dokai itself is not very good it's just it it's all dependent or than on the meta it's all dependent on what else is happening in the game not dokai itself it is only only ever good when the glitches of Dokai actually occur and I think that because of that Dokai itself is not that good it just is really reliant on glitches in the game it's really reliant on the fact that um sometimes you can just abuse mechanics of the game that were not originally intended to happen so the only time this bloodline is actually good is when it actually legitimately breaks the game so I think that you know that's not very fair to call a bloodline good because sometimes it breaks the game and in all honesty Dokai is just kind of an okay bloodline the coming to 10th place is going to be Sen Goku this is the skin Sengoku Inferno because I'm an absolute flex lord. But Sengoku itself, I'm going to be dead honest with you. Sengoku really is not, really not that great. I mean, like, it is an okay bloodline. You do obviously get this super buffed range M1s. That's always really a good thing. Uh, you get a weapon spec that's okay from the mode. But, like, Sengoku itself is only used for the counter. And even then, the counter really isn't that great. Now, they actually did, you know, buff the counter so it's not the worst thing in the world anymore. Because you used to be able to counter the Black Flames, which made Sengoku quite literally unusably terrible but Sengoku itself it does have the it does have, have some aspect of it that it makes it okay I mean like it has a, it has an okay stun you know what I mean it has okay abilities but in the end of things Sengoku really it's kind of trash I mean I, I'm sorry to say I'm sorry to Sengoku lovers uh it's back to the aspect of it being trash not because the bloodline itself is really that terrible but just because there's all of the abilities of Sengoku there's always better there, there's always something else you would rather use than Sengoku so nobody's gonna be farming Sengoku and nobody's gonna be getting Sengoku I heard if you liked the video right now you would get 60 million times luck in getting the best Akumas in the game so you better take a Chance. Now, coming in ninth place is going to be Sriracha Akuma. Now, I just want to put this out there before pe people go like, I'm going to dislike the video. Sriracha is actually good. Well, before you do that, Sriracha is okay now. I'm going to put this here. But it's just the fact of all of the Akumas are okay or better. Like, literally, almost every single Akuma is okay or better. So, Sriracha is still not that great compared to the other Akumas, but it's fine now. The second move, the main weakness of Sriracha, the second move doesn't have hit stuns. So you could block in the middle of it. You could use counters. You could use an all dodge, whatever. It's not good. But the first ability is it's an okay ability. I mean, it does do a lot of damage. But the main ability of Sriracha that carries it for being the worst in the entire game, this counter, man. This counter is so good. It's not a tp counter so you could actually use it um i mean the actual moto sriracha is fine it, it does damage it you know it drains stamina what else can you ask for but sriracha counter is the ability that does kind of carry it now wait i have sriracha mode 4 on my uh noob to pro but i don't have it on my main account isn't that kind of sad <laughs> well yeah for sriracha the final mode is also quite good but kind of what carries sriracha is definitely that counter this counter is just it's good i, I actually love this counter it's one of my single favorite counters in the entire game and the coming in eighth place is going to be ban Bankai Inferno. Bankai Inferno is actually Dokai. Um, they changed the name to Inferno for some reason. It's actually Bankai Dokai. Uh, you know, Bankai Dokai sounds kind of stupid in all honesty, so I, it makes sense why they changed it to Inferno. A lot cooler sounding. But yeah, Bankai Inferno, solid 8th place bloodline here. It's mainly because of the breakaway. The actual other moves are kind of trash in all honesty. Like the M1s, they knock back way too far. Web spec is just Ember Chi Blade. You know, the Z spec is really hard to actually hit. The breakaway is the thing that makes Bankai Inferno so good and you guys probably know that uh breakaways are actually insanely good in this game but yeah there's not much else to say about Bankai inferno it's just really good for that breakaway now coming to seventh place is going to be the original akuma bloodline now the original akuma um you guys know this it's a very trolly bloodline here so I'm, I'm actually am going to get them moved together so boom move them together and then i'm going to c-spec the c-spec still stacks it's you know it's the funny c-spec that akuma has always had but akuma in general really it's just kind of an okay bloodline it's the most average bloodline you could ever 
ever imagine being in Shindo Life. It has a damage ability. It has a stun. It has an auto dodge. It has an okay mode. It's just the most average build on in the game, but average does make it better than bad. So there's that. Now coming in sixth place is going to be Riser Akuma. Now Riser Akuma right here. Yeah, I mean, it's an okay bloodline, all things considered. It really could be a lot better. I mean, like, you know, you do have a, you do have a stun. You have a C-spec that drains mode. Like the third ability of Riser is trash. I would recommend just never using this, but the other abilities of Riser are okay. You have a good stun. I mean, you don't have a weapon spec, so there's that, but the C-spec is also quite good. The best ability of Riser is definitely the first one. It's like an auto dodge mixed with an iframe attack. A very, very good ability. Extremely good ability, but it does kind of carry Riser to not being the absolute worst Akuma in the game. The coming to fifth place is going to be Shiver Akuma. Now, Shiver Akuma is going to be coming to fifth just because Shiver Akuma itself is a decent bloodline. It has the potential to basically be really good at team fights simply because you can keep someone stunned for an extremely long period of time. Now, keeping something stunned for an extremely long period of time is obviously super advantageous in this game because if you could keep someone stunned like someone's teammate you could basically just wail on the other person so it's going to be here mainly because of team fights itself i do think it kind of lacks in the 1v1 de department but what it lacks in the 1v1 department it definitely makes up for it now coming to fourth place is going to be the original ryan akuma i don't know why i said original it's all of these are original besides shiver but what when it comes to ryan akuma boom you have the c spec it's a insanely insanely good mode drained chi seal ability by chi seal you cannot charge chi after you get hit by the ability and it lasts like an extremely long period of time too but the other abilities are ryan akuma they're okay i mean the weapon spec is an iframe damage stun it's like the third ability the third ability is it is another iframe you know block break stun ability the second move does tons of damage i think it did get nerfed it did um it's trash now don't use that second ability the only use for it was the amount of damage it did and now that's kind of doo-doo water but you guys know how good stuns are in this game it doesn't work on range projectiles anymore which definitely makes it a lot worse but it's it's okay in my opinion like ryan akuma is a very solid bloodline i do think that the mode is quite good the third ability is quite good so i feel like it should rank fourth just for that alone now coming to third place is going to be satori satori yes i mean like honestly satori has been through the rough and thin oh i okay yeah this first ability was chained it's not a, like a counter anymore the second move is a counter though the second move right here boom it counters <laughs> it counters you know what i mean it counters you do have a play, uh, you know, a good place lock stun with decent range. It does do a lot of damage. Now, weapon spec is insanely good. I mean, you have a C spec that you could use to run away from people really far. Satori is just kind of just a really, really, really good, like 6.5 out of 10 bloodline, if not a 7. The first ability is actually a, it's a stun, it's a stun ability that, you know, it makes someone go around. You can slap them with your clones. You could do stuff. But the main thing that does carry Satori is obviously going to be the mode itself. Now, coming to seven pl second place is actually going to be Bankai Akuma, not 7th that would that would not be a good rank but yeah bad kai kuma right here i do think bad kai kuma is going to only place the second place because of the stun but the stun is just that good it is an aoe basically a really easy to hit stun ability that can set up pretty much any combo in the game if you hit it correctly and if you actually are quite good at judging what someone's going to do you can hit the stun without even block breaking beforehand you just need to predict things but the other abilities of bad kai kuma they're really not that great it has an auto dodge that you know it teleports you back at the end of it you know that's whatever and then obviously you do have the third ability of Bankai, which, you know, it's just the damage ability. So it's mainly because of the stun. The stun of Bankai is insanely strong single-handedly top three stuns in the entire game but for bankai akuma itself it is really not that great just this stun by the way, guys what is your favorite akuma and shit of life if you have time comments below we'll be checking them out now the best akuma the number one akuma in shindo life is going to be shindai akuma shindai akuma the once the best to the worst back to being the best now i actually find this extremely funny shindai akuma they actually buffed it quite a bit like um the third ability place lock stuns now the second move is the the exact same they didn't really change it weapon spec now actually drains mode from people so and it's an iframe so there's that but the best part of shindai is actually the first ability the counter of the clones now the counter does not last that long but if you can actually hit this counter on someone it will do tons of damage to them like actually a metric ton i also want to mention that they actually did buff all of the akuma m1 so now they no longer knock back when you m1 people which is quite good it, it does make it it does make it quite good in all, like in all honesty and then obviously you do have the c-spec here the c-spec is just clones that chase people down um not really anything to say about them they'll just chase people down anyways guys that has to be for this video because enjoy this video remember to like subscribe and subscribe guys bye bye